There we go. I'll let you go. That's the manager. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Cheers. Uh, so where was I? So uh, he wants to ship his, his, his new product. And uh, well, he, he, he's, he's thinking about test automation. He might be a little bit too late uh, to get everything on board. Uh, and he might also consider test automation, same as manual testing, based on the same rules and principles. Um, on the other hand, we have the excited test automation engineer, who we, we probably all know who just loves to geek around, uh, brings favorite tools to the job, and basically forgets to check if his tools are actually the right tools for the job. Now, in both test, in both cases, test automation is, is standalone. And while the manager uh, uh, does not consider the technology at all, uh, the test engineer does, but he forgets about everything else. And interestingly, uh, both cases can happen in the same company on the same project at the same time. And this will probably result in expensive high maintenance test automation solutions. Not really something that we really want. Now, this is actually why test automation framework design is so important. Uh, this will make actually makes makes a difference in, in making money for a company or costing money. So, what is test automation framework design? Well, for me, it's not like back in the Selenium days when I had to uh, write code to, to create entire frameworks in Java. Uh, where I often felt more like a, a developer uh, than, than like a test engineer. And fortunately, nowadays with modern tools like Cypress, that's also not, not necessary anymore. But framework design is actually something quite different. Uh, it's more about uh, these, these aspects, the, the, the way you're working, uh, the culture you're in, uh, the resources available, who's going to test, uh, which skills are there, and also, of course, your technical landscape, the stack, and all the other dependencies there. And you have to create an approach that is fitting for your organization and based on these values. So now how I do this is basically I'm going, I'm going to show you based on the three examples of different projects where I work for. And I'm going to show you the differences uh, and also the similarities. And hopefully you can benefit from these practices too. Now, let's start with the first company. A couple of years ago, I was hired by this corporate organization. Uh, they had started a major project to create a new onboarding flow for their B2C clients. Uh, which was actually quite innovative for them. They hired uh, a lot of few developers, uh, GraphQL developers, backenders, and a couple of scrum masters to guide the process. And together uh, with the internal organization, they were creating the onboarding flow, which had to be connected to a complex uh, existing backend landscape. Now, I was hired here when the project was well on its way. Uh, the deadline was in something about like nine months, and they had realized uh, that too much stuff broke, so they needed testing and they needed it fast. And because six or seven teams were actually developing features at the same time, uh, the only way to do so was by in introducing test automation. Now, there was actually one tester uh, who worked for them, who was an excellent manual tester. His name was Mark. There was Mark. Mark was the kind of tester that was meticulous. He, he would scavenge for bugs in, in, in all types of applications, even third party stuff, and he would take great pride in, in what he discovered. So basically, I needed him on board for, for his skills and, his, and his, his way of testing. But the problem was that Mark uh, was not technical, not even a bit. So if we analyze what we have here, um, basically what we have to do, we, have, we, we need to test a, a lot of stuff in a very short amount of time with minimal resources. Uh, I had to train Mark on the job. He had zero experience with automation. Everything was new for him. And I needed him because, well, he had a lot of business knowledge and experience, and I needed the extra pair of hands to do so. And also because multiple teams were developing separate features for the same onboarding flow at the same time, it was the only way to get a sort of grip on actually what was happening. Now, um, I always like, uh, when I start to, to analyze what's needed, I'll, I always have a couple of questions which I like to well, like answer. Um, basically, these four questions. And, and the first one might sound even sounds a little bit obvious. Why do we need test automation? Uh, in this case, basically to mitigate the risks and to create insights uh, in quality on a very high level due to the, to the, to the deadline. Uh, what we're going to test, well, in this case, we're going to test the, the onboarding flow, uh, but we don't have the time to dive deep dive into user stories. So basically what we did, we chose to test the customer journeys, uh, which, which are already written out. And we went linear, horizontal through the application. Um, and also, uh, well, we did want to test the onboarding flow, but it's also connected to the back end. So, there was no real uh, proper, uh, probability to use mock data either. So we had to use fresh data each time. Now, uh, Mark and I were going to test it. Uh, we agreed that I would take care of all the technical challenges for him so he could focus on what he does best. And that's actually writing great test cases. And the way we were going to do it, well, we'll we use Cypress in this way and we created end-to-end -end tests for the customer journeys. 
Now, along uh, the way we did this, we discovered uh, a lot of stuff failed due to mapping issues between our new GraphQL endpoints and uh, existing REST APIs. So we also introduced API testing there as well to, to verify the mapping. And because Cypress is easy to learn, I was able to teach Mark uh, the basic syntax. And I taught him how to use a Cypress playground function to analyze the DOM elements. And when that went well, I also taught him how to use uh, DevTools as well. Uh, the result here was that we were actually able to automate all the customer journeys well before the deadline. Uh, and they all ran in the pipeline after deployment to the acceptance environment. And uh, what was really cool was actually that Mark became a very proud and excited uh, Cypress tester for his company. Now, this was an example of a situation uh, where there was no other choice than to put test automation after development process. And if we look at the testing pyramid, you might say that we solely focus on the proverbial top of the iceberg. Um, <clears throat> second example. This one is also quite interesting. I've had the great pleasure to uh, work for a, a charity organization. And uh, we, that organization supported a lot of different projects for different companies. Uh, the process was completely manual. Uh, the only thing they had in common was actually that they used the same word template to acquire all the necessary information. But there was no standardized way of working. Something completely different. I was hired here uh, together with a small development team, anal some analysts and a, and a scrum master uh, at the beginning of the project to create an application uh, that would standardize uh, the way of working and also replace the word template. And uh, the interesting thing was that we all started together uh, at the beginning of the project. So, and it actually meant that we were able to share our visions about testing and development, all that stuff, and make the entire solution our own. Uh, the challenges here were actually uh, that my client had never worked agile before, nor did they have any experience with IT projects. And because uh, we needed to standardize a way of working, uh, we had to work very close together uh, with, the, with the organization. So we, we had to create a short, a short feedback loop uh, to adapt to the changes uh, which came to us through uh, reviews and, and, and user experience testing. So basically, this meant for me that the test cases had to be written in the same sprint as the features were being developed to, to keep up the, the, the speed. So actually, if we go back to the questions, in this case, we already know why we need test automation. We had to be able to act to the change and uphold quality. If we want test automation to be truly embedded in a software development process, which in my opinion, it always should, uh, we have to create a shift left test approach where both developers and myself wrote test cases. Uh, so this is the how and who actually. And we did this using Cypress, but this was way before component testing was introduced. So I made the decision here to test the front end isolators from the back end. And this meant basically that our tests were sort of integration tests where we would intercept all API calls and insert mock data when needed. Now, the test cases uh, lived in the same Angular repository as the front-end code, so we were in complete control. And together with the developers, we introduced uh, test IDs, data attributes, as you know. We wrote handlers for specific testing functionality in Angular, also known as directives. So we had everything in place. But as I said in the beginning, um, test automation is not only about technology. And because, uh, in my experience, developers often scope tests different than testers do, uh, I made sure that uh, uh, during refinements as a team, uh, we were going to identify uh, and register all the test cases that we could think of. And we did not use acceptance criteria for basically, I think they're often too abstract. And uh, and also my client had not worked agile before. So it, it, we had, I tried to, to keep it really practical. And, and by doing so, we actually had a very interesting discussions during the refinements, uh, uh, and it was very easy to align with everybody about what we're going to test and, and what was needed to make it happen. For example, if we needed authentication, uh, mock data, or whatever. Also, uh, we used the pull, pull request uh, to check that uh, we wrote the right test cases we agreed upon. And basically, by, by using this approach from a bottom-up perspective, we created a sort of sense of quality awareness and ownership in our team. And because of this approach alone, uh, it, we never shipped a feature without its test cases. So it was really cool. Also, uh, we did, however, uh, introduce some end-to-end -end tests because we decided it would be a healthy check to, to see that the front end actually uh, talks with the back end. So we positioned them actually as smoke tests. And we did this by using the Pareto principle, also known as the 80-20 rule, where actually, let's say 80% of our tests were the integration tests, the front end tests, and the API tests. And the 20% were the happy flows uh, smoke tests. And because we tested the front end and the back end separately, our tests were super fast, uh, super stable, maintenance was almost zero. And well, that's actually basically impossible if you're focusing on end to end testing. Now, if you reflect back on the pyramid, we used basically two, uh, two layers of this uh, of the pyramid. 
where we also create a synergy between them. So uh, in this solution, actually, uh, what's really cool about this, this is not only beneficial for uh, the, the organization, but it's actually also embedded in your agile process and in the software development process. Sorry, I had to take a quick sip. Now, uh, for my last example, a totally different project. I was hired by a financial service company uh, who re-identified itself as an IT company. They did this uh, because although they were still selling services, uh, they also developed a lot of software to support this. And actually through a, a, a team of, well, what I'd like to call them visionary developers, the company came to understand that they should invest in creating a developer framework. So everyone uh, inside of the company could work with the same standards and the same tools. This framework consisted of a couple of different things. Uh, first off, uh, there was a command line interface, a CLI was created. Uh, and that, that was actually really cool because here you could just, with a couple of commands, you could set up your entire project, your front end and your back end. And it would come with repositories and pipelines that were automatically generated in Azure DevOps as well. And even Cypress came pre-installed and integrated there as well. And also uh, for everyone who was new to it, a fully uh, uh, functioning demo project was also shipped with it. So you could also play around locally to see how everything works together. Now, next to the CLI, uh, a component library was created. So everyone could work with the same uh, standard components for their different applications. So basically you could actually say that we were uh, sort of a software company inside another company. We were actually supplying them with the tools uh, that they needed. Now, I was hired here uh, to set up a test framework for this team, uh, but also to create a strategy uh, which would fit into the new way of working. And as I mentioned, uh, before the, the company uh, already developed software and they already had experience, uh, experienced testers uh, uh, working there. And they also had experience with automation and Cypress, uh, but they still did this from a, like a regression testing perspective, very end to end. Uh, and also uh, they used traditional uh, page object patterns and that sort of stuff. Now, if you go back to the questions, how are we going to test this? Uh, well, the CLI was something quite different. So we chose there uh, to, to test it only based on the units. So you testing and uh, after post deployment, we did uh, test the, 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 the CLI as a whole. And for the components, because we were only shipping components and we had no applications surrounding it, uh, component testing sounded as the right way to go. Uh, and because, uh, well, uh, the components will be tested inside of applications by, by the other projects. Uh, an interesting challenge though, was that sometimes uh, you would like to see uh, the semantic behavior between different components and they actually lived in, in separate repositories. So together with, uh, with Robert, uh, an excellent front-end developer and a good friend, we, we created something that we would like to call uh, component orchestration testing, which was basically sort of end-to-end -end test. For example, we had a, a search field and we had a different result box. And we went, we searched something, we want to see the results inside of the box. So uh, we did this uh, by creating an HTML file in the Cypress config where both components were, uh, were, were rendered and, and, and could work together. Now it worked very well, uh, but that was only the technical part, of course. And, but I also had to embed uh, everything in the in the way of working for the organizations, as I, as I mentioned. So to do this, I used the train, same trick as in the previous example. I, I used the, the refinements to identify and register the test cases. Um, but uh, because the test cases also uh, lived in the same uh, repository as the components, we also used the pull request uh, process again, but slightly different. Because this time I made sure that uh, all pull requests got reviewed by at least one developer and one tester from, from different perspectives, developers for code quality and, and so forth, and testers more for, for scoping and, and checking if you tested the right, the right things. And the cool thing actually was that the testers really liked this approach and they were really, really eager to pick this up. So it went very, very well. Uh, and, and actually what the, the funny thing was that the most challenging part was actually scoping because due to uh, component testing and unit testing living next to each other, there were some interesting discussions between developers and testers. So uh, in the end, we created sort of synergy between those two as well. So basically in this example, you see that we have fully used uh, all the layers of the pyramid. Uh, we went through a component testing, component orchestration testing, sort of end-to-end, -end, but still with mock data. So also like more integration. Well, and basically the CLI was, was a smoke test. As you can see, um, three totally different projects uh, with different test automation approaches. You see that uh, the framework design is very different, but it's purely the results of considering the values mentioned before. Uh, the way of working, uh, you really have to adapt to uh, the business needs if there's, if there's a deadline inside. So you have to make 
or is it there? Yeah, you have to make hard choices in, in that case. Yeah, you cannot create the most idealistic framework. Um, but if you if you're creating a developer framework, for example, like in the last example, well, you you probably have the room to do so. So that's actually quite different. And uh, well, from a culture standpoint, uh, it's very interesting to to use the agile process and the development process to integrate it in there. It will enable your quality awareness. Uh, it will en enable ownership and also uh, continuous continuous learning. Now, also of, of course, important is who's going to test. We've seen testers and developers. So the, the, the challenge there is to make them work together and their skills also uh, uh, will work next to each other. So what skills are there? What skills do we still need extra, for example? Uh, uh, testers and developers test differently, uh, scoping. And also, last but not least, uh, your, your landscape. Will, uh, know your environment. What are you going to test? What, what are the dependencies, its challenges? And, and, and also, if you do so uh, about tooling, uh, choose a tool actually that, that's really fitting the, the, the way you're going to test. Which we've seen end-to-end, -end, we've seen integration, we've seen component testing. So use your tool, choose your tool, and use your tool for the right purpose. Uh, Takeaway, as we've seen, uh, well, test automation framework design is more than, te than technology alone. If you're going to uh, analyze what you need, ask yourself the four questions. Why are we going to test? What are we going to test? How and who are going, who is going to test? And even remember that the why is often not as straightforward as you might think. So always ask that question. And you can see based on these prerequisites uh, from different projects, uh, a different take on testing was needed. Um, so for the first company, shifting left would have been absolutely impossible. However, if there was more time, if they had considered testing a way earlier in the process, we also have, we could have created a different approach, but still work with two testers, for example. Also, uh, I cannot stress this enough, but the importance of the refinements, I think this is actually very valuable. So uh, it's actually the moment everyone, everyone is involved. So identify and register your test cases there, the prerequisites, its dependencies, and its challenges. And this is basically the phase where you got the famous statements for garbage in, garbage out. So make sure to, to control this. Um, also, something worth considering is, of course, uh, using your pull request for static testing to review test cases. Best place to see if, if what you're testing are the right uh, things. You use the right scoping, right, right assertions. Uh, and also, I, I use it often, as you've seen, to train fellow testers and developers alike. Um, well, scoping, already mentioned it, but scoping is actually uh, really important. And I can, cannot stress this enough. Uh, uh, if people transition, for example, in the last uh, in the last uh, situation I've shown you from end to end to component testing is a, a very different a different approach where to start, where to stop, and also the, the difference between unit and component testing, for example. Uh, as you know, quality is as, is uh, yeah is as important for software development uh, for reaching your goals. So you really have to strategize about this, but not alone. Um, please do it together with everyone involved. Because for me, in the end, test automation framework design is really about uh, the synergy between the values, between the process, the culture, the people, the skills, and, and the landscape, of course. Well, and if you've, yeah, and yeah, this it says it right here. I mean, if you have to make it work, you have to really have to make it work together. Thank you.